Hello. In this video, we'll show you how two ALM Works products, Structure for Jira and Structure.Gantt, can help you tackle complex project management use cases. We'll also demonstrate what makes these products unique. Before we switch to the demo, let's talk briefly about why you might need additional tools for Jira. Jira offers a lot right out of the box. It has highly configurable workflows and custom fields, so you can set up your projects to suit each team's unique process. The Scrum and Kanban boards that come with Jira software offer great planning and tracking capabilities for your agile software development teams. With all that, you can build a solid foundation to support both individual projects as well as company-wide initiatives. However, as the number of teams, tasks, and dependencies between them grows, Jira features alone may not give you the visibility that you need. Project managers in every organization face a lot of the same challenges. Planning and tracking across multiple teams or projects, understanding and managing dependencies, balancing teams' workloads, and prioritizing work across multiple work streams. These challenges may be common, but their solutions require unique approaches. They need to be tailored to each company's culture, team structure, business needs, or other factors. This was one of the driving ideas behind Structure for Jira. Let's see how this idea works in practice. To illustrate, we'll use one of the most common use cases, visualizing a portfolio of projects. This will be a simplified configuration, but it should give you a good overview of key product capabilities. Let's take a quick look at the Jira configuration first. We have a Kanban board which contains a number of initiatives we're working on. Each of them is linked to a parent theme and a number of epics, which might be specific to one team or span multiple teams. We're using the implements issue link to connect them. The epics are present on the scrum boards, where each team is managing their stories. Using some of Jira software's standard features, we've configured a five-level hierarchy, going from theme to subtask. But there's no easy way to visualize this in Jira. This is where structure can help. So let's build our first structure, the hierarchy of issues that will represent our portfolio of projects. You can build as many structures as you want for any purpose you want. You may choose to share them with other users as you create them or configure permissions later. You can start building your structure manually if you wish, but the real power of structure lies in its automation feature. It allows you to build dynamic structures based on different types of rules that you have at your disposal. We call these rules generators. For our use case, we want to build a top-down work breakdown structure that will help us visualize all of our projects. Let's start by adding our top-level items. We can add all issues from a particular board or use a more flexible JQL option to define what issues we want to see. As we add the generator, we see the results of its work right away. As long as you have your structure open, it will automatically update itself in real time, based on changes in Jira. For example, if you create a new theme in Jira, it'll be added to your structure right away. Now let's add the initiatives and epics, which are linked to our themes. To do that, we'll use the Extend Generator, which allows us to visualize the different types of relationships that exist between JIRA issues, such as issue links, epic links, parent links from advanced roadmaps, and a few others. In our example, we're using the Implements Issue link to connect our three highest levels. You can now see that our initiatives and epics were added to the structure. Following a similar principle, we can now add our stories and their subtasks under epics. As the last step, we'll use the sort generator to arrange our issues based on Jira rank, so they appear in the order that's been set on our Jira Agile boards. This will give us a full top-down view of all the projects we're working on. Once we've finished building the hierarchy, we can hide the generators and focus on the data. With structure, you can work with any Jira field, adding them as columns to our current structure view.
You can see the values of the fields and edit them in line. This makes Structure a great tool for all kinds of tasks where you need to work with a large number of issues at the same time. Apart from standard JIRA fields, Structure offers a number of custom columns. The Progress column allows you to calculate progress across your entire hierarchy based on different types of JIRA data. You could use time tracking data. Or if you don't track time, you could use the statuses of JIRA issues weighted by story point estimates. You can also easily aggregate any numeric field, such as story points or time spent. As we add more columns, we may start running out of space on our screen. To work with a large number of columns, we can enable horizontal scrolling so the summary column stays in place as we scroll. Once we're happy with the set of columns we've added, we can save it as a new view and make it the default for our structure. Now let's take a look at another scenario. When you have a single scrum team, planning just one sprint ahead might work well. However, in many real-life situations with cross-team dependencies, planning for several iterations may be required. Let's see how structure can help. We can create another structure specifically for sprint planning. This time we'll start with stories. Let's add them to our new structure first. To see how the stories are distributed between different sprints, we can use the group generator. In the Story Points Totals column, we can see how many story points are already committed per sprint. For convenience, we can open the same structure in the second panel so we can focus on the Backlog folder. If we know how many story points each team can handle per sprint, we can now assign the stories from the Backlog to the appropriate sprints without overcommitting. If you want to go a level below and check the work allocation by team members, you can add another level of grouping and see if anyone is overbooked. You can also go a level above and see how much work is planned for each release. So as you can see, Using generators as building blocks, you can create an issue hierarchy for your specific use case without having to change the way your teams work. Using the same set of features, you can give more traceability to your team members or provide the right high-level overviews to your managers. You can build powerful reports or use inline editing to significantly simplify and speed up your planning sessions. As our users become more and more familiar with how Structure works, they start discovering new applications for it and new ways to improve their processes. Structure becomes the primary way in which they interact with Jira. It establishes a new home base to work from. For those who want even more options, we've built an extension for Structure, Structure.Gantt. It adds a timeline view to your hierarchy, which you can configure for a number of different scenarios. While Agile methodologies have become the new standard in many industries, some projects require strict schedules. If you can create your plans in Jira, you don't have to build integrations with third-party tools like Microsoft Project. It's just much simpler this way. But even in an Agile context, a Gantt chart timeline view can be very helpful. While your development teams may be doing just-in-time sprint planning, your business teams usually think in terms of larger initiatives not sprints. Building a high-level roadmap of your projects helps everyone visualize the project's scope and identify bottlenecks and dependencies. Since our Gantt chart uses real-time JIRA data to visualize issues, it becomes a great tool for tracking progress and can help you see possible delays sooner. By defining the teams and their capacity, you can build more realistic plans and make scope or team adjustments to make sure you meet your deadlines. 
Finally, Gantt charts offer a great way to see a project's status at a glance or dive deeper into a particular aspect of the project. As an example, let's build a portfolio roadmap for our projects in Structure.Gantt. We begin by building a hierarchy that will represent our work breakdown structure. In this case, we want to see the initiatives we'll be working on and the epics that implement them. We've also added two JIRA issues that we'll use to represent important project milestones in our Gantt chart. Also, let's open the view we have previously created to use with our Gantt chart. Now we'll configure our Gantt chart. We start by defining the project start date and choosing the calendar that'll be used. Then we choose which JIRA fields we want to use for the task's work estimates, along with the start and end dates. For dependencies, our Gantt chart uses JIRA issue links. You can choose which link types will represent different types of dependencies. In this example, we'll use the blocks link for the finish to start dependencies. Finally, we'll choose which JIRA field will be used for resources. Once we've finished configuring the chart, we can see our tasks displayed on the timeline based on our settings. To adjust our roadmap, we can change the fields and links in JIRA, or we can make these changes right in the chart. The task's duration can be calculated based on the estimate and the capacity of the resource assigned to the task. Or, the task can have a fixed duration defined by the start and end dates. You can see this information in the Task Details panel. Scheduling conflicts are highlighted in the chart. You have a number of options available to help you resolve them. Milestones are another useful feature. Structure.Gantt can show them based on the defined dependencies, so you can easily visualize projected finish dates. Alternatively, you may wish to set fixed milestone dates yourself and use them to check whether your release is on track. In addition to the timeline, you can also open the Resources panel. In this panel, you can see the resources assigned to the tasks in your Gantt chart, as well as their total allocation. For each individual resource, you can define its capacity, schedule, time zone, and availability. The Gantt chart will calculate resource usage based on these settings and the tasks assigned to the resource. This will help you build optimal plans while avoiding resource overallocation. With Structure.Gantt, you can easily build Gantt charts that behave the way you need them to. You can build high-level outlines of project phases, or you can build deeply detailed plans that take every nuance into account. Thanks for watching. If you feel Structure or Structure.Gantt could be a good fit for your organization, please give them a try. Our team will be happy to answer any questions you may have during the evaluation and we'll help you configure these tools for your specific needs.